Welcome! This is the 20th in my series of climate mythbusters, and the myth I'm going to bust today is that my local cold weather means that anthropogenic global warming isn't happening. Well, let's go to the myth conception itself. The claim is, if there is anthropogenic global warming, we should not be getting all of this cold weather anymore. Now that's a completely illogical statement, and I'll show you why in a minute. However, it's usually backed up with reports of record cold weather and snow uh, and ice falls in unusual places like the middle of the Sahara Desert and so on. And most of these reports are untrue or at least very misleading. I'm going to illustrate what nonsense that initial statement of the misconception was from the point of view of our local weather. Uh, here I've plotted four curves. In blue, the record low temperature for each month of the year. In green, the average low temperature, in orange, the average high temperature, and in red, the record high temperature. Now, an interesting fact to notice here is that the difference between the average daily low and the average daily high is about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's fairly constant throughout the year. The difference between the record high and the record low is a bit more variable, but averages out at about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, let's see what difference global warming has made to those figures. Now, daily temperatures have been rising slower than nighttime temperatures. So it's added a couple of degrees to the high temperatures and uh, about three or four degrees to the low temperatures. But you can see that the difference in these curves is fairly marginal. But let's take a look at the snow potential in these circumstances. This gray area shows what I call the snow zone, where temperatures below the mid thirties generally have the possibility of producing snow. Under the old system, snow was unlikely in our area from the middle of March to the beginning of November. But with global warming, that zone has expanded from the end of February to the middle of November. So we're less likely to get snow now and our snow season is much shorter. This says nothing about temperatures, by the way. Let's return to this plot for a second. We'll put in our snow zone again. But you will notice that these two areas marked in deep blue here, you have the potential for snow, but no record cold. Often in these sorts of videos that you see on YouTube or in blogs, they will claim that snow is equivalent to record cold. And of course, that is not true. When you make a set of measurements of global temperature, you get a distribution something like this. Now the width of this distribution depends on how variable that data is. The more variable the data, the broader the width distribution. And that width is measured by the standard deviation. Such that if you go one standard deviation either side of the average, you get 68% of your data within that range. Go to two standard deviations, it's 95% of the data. Go to three standard deviations, it's 99.7% of the data. So it's increasingly more difficult to get extreme values in a random system like that. So here you'd have your record cold temperatures off to the left and your record high temperatures off to the right. And those numbers should be approximately equal if the climate is in balance. But what happens if you disturb that balance by warming the climate up slightly? Well, the average will move to the right and that will mean that more hot weather will occur and you'll get more record highs than you will get record lows. And that's exactly what has been happening. If you look at that ratio between high temperature records and low temperature records over the last few decades, you'll see in the 1960s and 1970s, there are actually more low temperature records being set than high temperature records. That ratio reversed in the 1980s. In the 1990s, it was a ratio of about 1.4 to one. By 2000s, the ratio was two to one. So we were getting two high temperature records for every one low temperature record. That increasing trend has continued into the 2000 and teens. And so far, the ratio is 2.2 to one. But I suspect by the end of the decade, that ratio is going to be more like 2.5 to one. So that indicates we have a generally warming planet uh, with a climate system that's not necessarily in balance. Well, let's leap to some conclusions. Your local weather on any given day is not an indicator of global climate trends. Just because there might be some snow on the ground doesn't mean that global warming is not happening or it's unusually cold. 
There are more high temperature records being set than low temperature records, which indicates that the climate system is in, not in balance and is favouring a warming planet. The greater the difference in that ratio, the faster the planet is warming. So if you do see somebody using the excuse that a uh, minor snowstorm or uh, a single low temperature record negates the whole argument for anthropogenic global warming, tell them they're full of nonsense and post them a link to this video. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time, goodbye.